welcome everyone to another episode of Into the Pit. And I have here Sister Kia Lynn Francis. And she works with an exorcist. And she's going to explain exactly what her position is. And uh, also works with the Warren Foundation, correct? With Nespar. Nespar, okay. And before we get into the conversation, I would like to uh, Sister Kia to just kind of tell us a little bit about herself. So the floor is yours. All right. So um, I grew up always having uh, psychic abilities, that, you know, looking in hindsight, I, I realized what that was. And, you know, my imaginary friend, Dinja, that looked like she belonged on Little House on the Prairie, um, was actually a little ghost, a ghost kid that I used to play with. Um, and uh, I didn't really embrace my abilities until I was in my 30s because it scared me more than anything. And it wasn't that mainstream at the time. So, you know, it was just more terrifying for, <laughs> for me. So I put it away. I'm like, that just didn't happen. <laughs> um, I used to do, like, I would sit down with a pen in my hand and it would start to, uh, to write and it would do automatic writing. So, yeah, it was really creepy. Um, so I, I lived in a very haunted house before I got into the paranormal. And I would say that it was uh, a demonic entity with several other entities that live there with it. And I don't use that term lightly, because like I always say, everything that goes bump in the night is not paranormal. And everything not par everything paranormal is not necessarily demonic. But this, um, knowing now what I was dealing with, um, I was living with a uh, demonic oppression and um, you know, that kind of led me into developing an interest into the paranormal. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually a witch before I was a sister. So um, I've, you know, I've, I've shared different religious views and as far as I'm concerned, following a higher power and being a good person is just what it's all about. I don't, Care where your butt is on Sundays, uh, as long as you know you kind of have that uh, that that look at, at life, and just being a good person. Um, so uh, I work with uh, an archbishop, uh, Father Plato Angelakis, and he's an exorcist. He's Rome trained, um, like through the Vatican trained. Um, he has two PhDs um, in ministry and divinity. And um, I use my abilities, um, my psychic abilities to help with an exorcism, um, you know, because I have that insight. I don't want to say like I have a bond to demons because <laughs> it's not just that, but that's just happens to be the area that I've chosen to special in and that specialize in and, and work in. Um, more often than not, I started as an investigator and kind of moved into this. And um, so he is an exorcist and I am uh, an auxiliary exorcist. So I go in and I, I help him with the exorcisms, with the house cleansings. And um, because uh, in the church, uh, the sisters are not exorcists. Uh, auxiliary exorcist is like the highest level that I can can reach uh, with that. So I'm an assistant to him. There's a lot of call and response in the old rite of exorcism. So I do that with him. Um, I warn him sometimes like watch your six, you're going to get clocked in, in a mm. couple of minutes. I feel like it's building up some, you know, physical animosity towards you and be ready to duck kind of thing. Um, and uh, also help the people because we do a lot of our work remotely, especially with the border being closed now and we're in Canada. So we're still helping people. It's just, um, you know, we have to send stuff through the mail to them, like blessed salt and oil and things like that of that nature. Um, but getting to an exorcism, not everyone needs an exorcism and it's a process and it takes, um, it takes sometimes months to get there. Um, we're independent Catholic, so we don't have to follow the, like the bureaucracies of the Catholic church. I don't need like approval, like father Plato gives the approval for an exorcism and, and that's it. We can go forward with it. Um, 
but there's a lot involved with getting ready for an exorcism and even deeming if you need one or not. Um, you know, they have to be cleared uh, through psychiatrists, psychologists, and medically as well. Um, just kind of don't come in f flinging water and the power of Christ compels you. It's just not like that. Um, although a lot of what happened in that movie is physically possible, except for the head going 360. That it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. <laughs> no. Right. But the eyes changing and the spitting and swearing and peeing and all that stuff, a lot of, you know, that, that's possible. Um, so doing that and working with um, NESPAR, which is the group that Ed and Lorraine started in 1954, we are the um, religious consultants, I think our terms are, and um, we will help them if they have cases that are, uh, you know, severe and requiring our services. Um, and uh, yeah, we do a lot of public speaking or had been doing a lot of public speaking at Paracons in the US, but when the border closed, that kind of shut everything down. So trying to do some teaching and still staying out there with everybody through podcasts like yours. So thank you. Thank you. Um, no, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a calling for sure. Um, it's dangerous. Um, it makes it really hard to get a date. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm, uh, I'm going to explain because uh, people are like, date? You're a nun. I'm not a nun. I'm a Catholic sister. So there's a little bit of difference in that. Um, nuns are cloistered and tend to you know they live in the nunneries they're tucked away they do nothing but pray they don't work um as a sister um i'm raising a child so i can't raise a child and take a vow of celibacy not that i have to take that vow um so it's just a little bit different in terms of their their lesser vows than what a nun would take and so um i have a little bit more freedom in terms of my life um like living it like a quote unquote normal person um like my habit isn't on all the time like i have jeans and t-shirts and stuff so like, <laughs> i don't look like this all the time uh, <laughs> this isn't my daily wardrobe um but yeah so i mean it's it's been years that i've been in this i'm also a registered nurse so um i've done a lot of baptisms because we can do that um in the neonatal intensive care, unfortunately, sometimes we don't have time to call call a priest in. So, I've been doing exorcisms even for twenty years, not knowing it because the baptism is actually a minor rite of exorcism. So, you know, it's started way back then. So, when people say, "How many exorcisms have you done?" It's like I can't even count because those all count on all the kids that I've ever baptized. So. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, uh, what else can I tell you? I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty down to earth kind of girl. Uh, just happen to have this crazy side job, but it needs to be done. And there's a lot of evil out there right now and people need a lot of help and, you know, we're trying our best to give it to them. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's changed. There's been a swing in the energy, any light worker, will tell you that uh, a lot of empaths and uh i keep saying that you know as a as humans we have to do better like oh, you know yeah. we, we do better people we kind of we suck right now do better be nice to each other be kind and uh you know cut evil off at the knees and, and you know if you've ever read revelations or haven't read revelations and you're not even religious it's just something you might want to read us your own curiosity to see what's going on in the world today and how there's a lot of things that uh, kind of jive with that um than what's going on so um i don't know i guess that's it <laughs> that's me in a nutshell i guess <laughs> um, you can ask away <laughs> well you know i was going to say the Everybody that is in the field, especially those with abilities, will tell you that that veil is getting thinner and thinner between this world and the next. And as we were talking about before we started recording, uh, it seems like this world is, is so evil 
that it's in basically in, it's feeding these entities and people don't realize this is not a game they're no they're they're selfish they don't think about other people it's all look at me look at me and everything that used to be good people look at as bad and all the things that are bad people look at as good and they accept it i've, I've mentioned sodom and gomorrah and how that city got so evil that god said you know if you could find one righteous person i'll spare this town well they couldn't even find one righteous person it was gone it's it's getting to be that way people don't they don't want to believe they just they, they i never thought i'd see the day where people would look down at you for talking about god or believing in god yeah and that's like i mentioned to you before too when i converted from being a witch to a sister a lot of people turned their nose up at me they shunned me they didn't want to talk to me anymore and i just found that really shocking that that people are that judgy when i'm still the same person i mean my path has obviously changed somewhat but i was called to that path and i'm doing this for a reason you know and i'm i'm using my abilities in a different way but it's still in a helping way and i can't understand how people can be so i don't know they're like so anti-god like that that's just so ridiculous that, that the thought of a higher power is nonsense to them you know and if that's their opinion fine but you know you don't have to spread it on me just like i don't force my religion on anybody you know like I, like i said it's it's about being a good person having a strong moral compass and and you know following a higher power and i mean most religions if you look at the basis of that, that that's what they do right whether you know whether it's uh catholic or whether it's jewish or or muslim like everybody follows a higher power and f for good and um there's just not enough good in the world right now and exactly. we're really seeing a spike in cases of um you know demonic oppression and um you know negativity rising and with the fear energy and the hate energy and all that energy that the world is putting out these entities definitely feed off of that and um you know we're having a, a bigger job it's a harder job um to go forward with and it's not a game and it's not fun and it's not about getting on TV or being famous, you know, for me, like, you know, some people have TV shows. That's cool. I, I don't, <laughs> that's cool too. <laughs> that's, I, I'm, I'm an old lady now. I miss my, <laughs> my so I say, I'm, I'm, I'm an old and old and ugly now. So I missed my ah. window to do that. Sort of thing. <laughs> but you know what, like, if, you know, if that's, if that's your path that you've been taking on fine, it just happens to be that I'm on a, a different path. So again, I don't, I don't judge, but um, yeah, it's uh it's something and i mean i've lived both sides of it i lived in a house that was infested and i did live through a demonic oppression before i even got into the paranormal and i'm talking like poltergeist activity um my 600 pound bed shook for at least two and a half minutes and there was no earthquake activity like i like to debunk stuff i don't just assume everything is paranormal um you know, disembodied voices, footsteps, drawers being opened and closed, um, apportation, so things would disappear and then reappear in other places. And, um, you know, I, I lived it all, bruises, scratches, uh, you name it, it happened. I'm writing a book about it and I've been so slow and so lazy. People are like, is your book ready yet? And I'm like, no, <laughs> like it's not. And I have no excuse why it's not other than I'm lazy bones. Um, no, actually I've been, I've been sick. I just had a hip replacement done and stuff and I had a pulmonary embolism that nearly killed me. So I think that gives me a buy <laughs> for not we'll give you a, pass. a little while, you know, <laughs> a little bit of a pass, just a little bit and go easy on me. And, um, 
But, you know, we're really glad that the borders are opening up again and we're going to be able to come to the U.S. and help. And NESPAR is centered in Connecticut and Monroe, Connecticut. So, you know, if there was any um, work to be done there, we couldn't, we just couldn't make it across the border, you know. Um, so now that that's opening up, we'll be able to do some more paracons where we do like to go and speak on different things, um, you know, spiritual protection or what have you. We'll talk about whatever. You never know till you till you get us there with Father uh, Fent, Father Angelakis and myself. And um, we're kind of funny, kind of we're kind of funny when we talk. We're not boring, so we're gonna make we want to want people to come. We don't want them to feel like they're being punished. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> we're not gonna be like, were you at church last week? Um, but yeah, it's uh, we're, we're busy and there's a lot of evil out there. And I, I encourage people to just be nicer to one another and pray. It raises your vibration. Um, I'm also a Reiki master. Actually, I'm a postmaster. So I'll be a grandmaster by September. And um, that's something that I use as well when we do exorcisms or have had to do a really heavy duty cleansing is um, I will treat the the person or the family for that matter um, and replace that low vibrational negative energy with high vibrational positive energy and do healing that way. And so that they don't have that longing. Some people that have had a demonic attachment kind of miss it and for a lack of a, way, a better way to put it and, and they call them back and that's a big problem. So trying to avoid that, I treat them um, with uh, Reiki and um, my lineage, uh, Reiki started a hundred years ago and Dr. Sui started it and I can count the masters between Dr. Sui and myself, there's 25. So my, lit my lineage is really pure for um, Reiki. It's not like, you know, you see the pop-ups on social media and be a Reiki master in a weekend. Like it took me years to become a Reiki master. So um but that's something else I have in my toolbox. Uh, and being a sister, I'm an empath and a clairvoyant. I have all the clairs. Um, but the church uh, deems me as a mystic. And uh, I have two archbishops that have vouched for me. I have a sealed document um, saying that I am what I am, you know, and that I do have gifts that are, are helping through the church. So I'm very honored that they, they did that um, and that they recognized my, um, my quirky talents. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a whole, it's a whole lifestyle really, but yeah. um, you know, I'm not going to get rich doing it. I'm doing it for, to help people. And that's what it's all about. So now, before we get further into the conversation, uh, for those that may not know, could you better explain NESPAR to them? Uh, yes. Um, Ed and Lorraine Warren founded NESPAR in 1954, New England Society of Psychic Research. And they are they were the owners of like the Annabelle doll, um, the Shadow doll. Uh, they're the Conjuring series and the Annabelle series. And um, that's based on some of their cases and Amityville. They invested, they investigated at Amityville. Um, Miss Lorraine uh, worked until she was 90 and she passed when she was 92. And uh, she was a clairvoyant and um, she worked with her, her best friend and her husband and her, her person, Ed, for many, many years until Ed's passing. And Tony Spera and Judy Spera have taken over in um, in their places now. And um, the Haunted Museum is closed because of zoning. That's where Annabelle is kept and the Shadow Doll. And if you've seen The Conjuring 3, the, the dino that gets possessed, they have the actual dino, like the little dinosaur. Um, so um yeah a really well-known paranormal group that's been going on since before you know it was a thing and um and lorraine did uh about 3500 cases in their careers and uh they didn't get paid to do that either um they wrote books and but in the beginning they were painting 
plates of houses and trying to sell them to the homeowners to to make ends meet. Um, I have met Annabelle. It is an evil doll. There is definitely something in it. And, um, you know, the uh, museum is very intense. There's a lot of concentrated evil in there. Um, and uh, I just put something up on my Facebook wall, actually. And it was, uh, did Annabelle just blink? And they were in the museum. And the, the film is a little bit, you know, someone was walking with the camera. But, you know, I invite you. It's going to be controversial, but I invite you to look at it and see if you can see Annabelle blink. Watch it for a few times um, and see what, what you think of, uh, of it anyway. Um, so yeah, Nespar has um, been around since 1954. So that's quite a quite a long time, and it's a really solid bunch of investigators and demonologists, and you know, um, you know, people that I'm proud to work alongside of, for sure. Well, I know the stories have been sensationalized by Hollywood, but oh yeah, that, totally. For those that don't know, that's that that's real. Annabelle is real. The the story of the conjuring, Amityville, all those things are real. Uh, just you didn't happen the way you see it on the, the yeah, movie screen. I, I, but I think the original <laughs> Annabelle is about twenty five percent real. And then like the last one is like nothing. <laughs> you know, um, but the, yeah, they are based on real stories. And Amityville is one that people know quite well. Um and that was something that um, that uh, Miss Lorraine said that was the closest to hell, to hell that she had ever gotten and would like to get sort of thing. So it was a pretty, uh, pretty intense um, haunting. And uh, that was covered in the news media as well back then. So, um, but yeah, the, uh, the Annabelle doll is real. It was, you know, given to a girl and nursing students and it was moving inside the apartment and they thought someone was and leaving notes, pieces of paper, uh, parchment with notes. And they thought someone was breaking into their apartment and being smart aleck and, and they proved that it was not the case. And, um, Ed and Lorraine even had trouble getting it home. Their car started acting up and, uh, you know, um, Ed threw holy water on it just to, to kind of quell it and get it back to the museum. And it's in a case that's been made with holy water and in the uh, varnish and uh, there's crucifixes all over it. It's blessed regularly as is the museum. You know, um, they take, uh, take a lot of, uh, you know, steps to, pr to, to kind of keep that evil like contained in there because there are so many objects uh in that in that small space so no. yeah are you there a, um, i'm sorry go ahead no they're having a um their first um paracon um the warrens uh in the Warren name in october uh the 30th and the 31st the 30th has sold out and the 30th um I'm not sure how, how many tickets are left, but you can see some of the haunted artifacts and um, go see some people speaking and stuff. So this is the first one that um, I, I believe that Tony has done, Tony Sparrow. So it'll be uh, interesting to see. It's in Connecticut. So I'll be there. Come see me. Say hi. <laughs> now, in your experiences with exorcisms, how much of it can you actually talk about? Are you able to speak openly about any of your cases yeah i can speak about cases i'll um generalize some of the things in them um just for like for privacy sake of course. um you know um some of them are very gentle shall we put it and the entity goes relatively easily and there's more tears than anything else involved in it. Um, and I did have one that I had an incredibly strong tie with the person that was being exercised and they cried through their whole exorcism. So did I, because <laughs> I was feeling what they were feeling the whole time. And that was intense. Um, 
and uh, Dan Rivera, the uh, lead investigator, had to go get me take paper towel. I'm just like all snot and tears. And I didn't know that that was going to happen, that it would hit me so hard, you know. Um, but that was like a quieter exorcism, you know. Um, and the person did say that they wanted to stab Father Plato with the crucifix. Um in the neck but they said it quietly <laughs> they, they weren't you know screaming at him mm -hmm. and there's been other situations where you know police have had to have been called that um the person broke their own arm they were being tied down and they snapped their own arm to get it off of the chair and they pulled um I wasn't at this one, but Father Plato said they pulled like a six, eight inch blade on him, kitchen knife, and came after him. Uh, and the police were called for that, of course. So, um, but yeah, the person had broken their own arm uh, to get to get up from the chair. Um, so it is dangerous. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, it's um, that's why. I get brought along is to kind of help um, do a walk through the house and find like where the nest for a lack of, like lack of a better word might be like where the entity likes to hang out and where we need to like salt and oil and, and um, you know, smoke it out. And, um, and then just with what's going on during the exorcism, because I can have that link with the people Um and then afterwards do the healing Reiki um, when it's gone. So there's like a wide variety of spectrum of what an exorcism can be, um, but they can be violent and it's unpredictable. And I've seen people's eyes change, um, you know, to like serpentine looking eyes, um, you know, in different color, black, really blue 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 color um you know i've i've had you know you put something blessed on them and like uh, like a ball develops underneath it almost like a an egg growing underneath where the holy item was placed um it's stuff that you would see in movies you know and um yeah it it can be pretty scary and uh you can't be scared because you have a job to do and there's no place for weakness um in an exorcism the team has to be really ready to go they have to be good you know with themselves we all get ready in a different way but you know if your life is a mess you shouldn't be helping in an exorcism you know if you have if you have family problems going on and you're like feeling a little bit depressed or whatever you know you, you need to bow out like for the safety of your whole team kind of thing everybody has to go in really um firm and ready to do their job and uh and it's no joke like it's it's a serious it's a really serious thing like it's um yeah and I mean, people do get hurt sometimes, like, you know, um, that's obviously we try and avoid for that to happen. But like this, like I said, that person broke their own arm. That's um, crazy. To, yeah. Yeah. So, and this is people that have been cleared by psychiatrists or psychologists that they're not suffering from mental illness because that's part of it too, right? We want to make sure that they don't have a schizoaffective disorder necessarily or a schizophrenia or, you know, it's, um, it's taken seriously. Like I was saying before, we just don't come in flicking water and salt and like the power of Christ compels you. And it's like, it's a, there's a big lead up to it. And, you know, the people are given prayers that they need to practice in their life. They need to start changing, making some changes in their lives. And it's something that we build to and give them tools so that they will have those tools to deal with after we are gone, because the chances of them still being tormented to some degree, not like to the point that they were initially, but that spirits will still be hanging around. And, you know, it happens quite often that they, you know, it's, it's a lifetime thing that they have to, uh, that they have to deal with. 
So we want them as strong as possible and to have a good foundation and have those tools um, and the, those weapons kind of thing, you know, your prayers are your weapons. And so that they can deal with that, um, you know, long after we're gone and they take the onus on themselves after that, after the, the archbishop has given them back their will, their free will, you know, then they've got to maintain that. So well, as a human, I have that curiosity that, outside of the norm you know you want to know how much that you of course see it, that's dramatized by films and tv shows how much of that is real how much of it is just so over the top it never happens so you know i guess what i'm saying is if you've seen anything like what you see in in the movies yeah you can see a lot of like <sighs> You know, except for the head spinning 360, like a lot of that can be real, like the vomiting, the cursing, the voices that are not human, um, multiple voices, um, you know, things can fly around, uh, eyes changing, um, spittle can drip from someone's mouth and then hit a white shirt and turn into blood. Um, you know, lots of lots of different things. There's lots of, uh, like I said, the eyes changing um, colors, like really weird colors or like looking like serpentine. Um, uh, Mr. Spera, Tony shows a video of uh, an exorcism and the man stops blinking for four minutes and his eyes change to like a serpentine eye, but like you can literally see when he stops blinking, when the demon's taken over. Um, and that, I mean, four minutes is a really abnormally long time not to blink and you, you do notice it. Um, but yeah, all the vomiting, um, you know, urination, um, levitation in rare cases. Um, but yeah, um, it's not all of what you see is baloney. <laughs> And it can happen. So, well, as with anything spiritual, I believe that it's a calling, whether it's preaching or, like in your case, doing exorcisms, things like that. So, if anybody has been called to do something like that, what do they need to do as far as training? Um, the uh, the priests that are trained there's like there's many different ways they can be trained like there can be deliverance uh ministers uh do you know what i'm saying for different faiths they have different different training things and different titles for what they've for what they are are doing um you know um father plato's bio is like huge and he's done a lot of training uh and I mean, he has two PhDs, one in divinity, one in ministry. Um, he's a deliverance minister. He studied at the Vatican. Um, the Vatican's running a course of 250 people a year, and he's accepted into it and has done some remotely because of COVID and will be traveling to Rome. Um, hopefully, maybe not this year, but next um, to finish the, the course at the actual Vatican. Um, so, I mean, there is training involved with it. It's not like, you know, you just pick up a book and start reading. <laughs> so, right. you don't you go know. watch The Exorcist and all of a sudden you can go out and do it. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Or then you're going to be calling us. <laughs> like, and then it's going to be you and the other person that's in trouble. So, <laughs> right. you know, <laughs> and, and that's, you know, you want to make sure if someone's helping you with that, that that they do have the proper training for it and don't be afraid to ask because you know your dentist has their certificate posted on their wall and you know you want to know what this person is has done and how they're trained spiritually before you're letting them in if you're having problems like this right so don't be afraid to ask you don't want scooby-doo to show up and the mystery machine so <laughs> you know, I actually want somebody geared to you know to uh to this field if that's what you need well i know being that i i was a baptist preacher 
for about five years and that was that was basically the uh that was my religion of choice i guess you'd say mm -hmm. um and there's a big difference between baptist and catholic and i know that baptists will do an exorcism but it's like a very 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 rare thing i just i'm i'm curious as to know the the key differences between the two religions and when it comes to exorcisms i mean are you familiar with the baptist faith at all a little bit um well in terms of our our exorcisms like we um we go into the person's house we start blessing from the outside in because we want to trap the entity in the house mm -hmm. so we would start on the property and work our way in even the animals get a blessing and like put holy oil on them so that it can't jump into the animal and hide because uh, it, it will entities will try and do that will hide in any living vessel um like i've oiled a hamster before <laughs> i think or a gerbil something like that some little critter yeah. that was in the house um and then the um the person will do confession uh with the um with the the preacher um and they will do take the eucharist so like communion holy communion right um to get them ready for it and everyone involved in it does that um so everybody is set and that kind of and then the house then we would do the house uh, and do the house blessing and cleansing of the house and then the last stage would be to do um the exorcism and then uh, walk the house after and make sure it's not hiding anywhere and like I said, I do Reiki on people if they want it afterwards, just to for the healing energy, the positive energy to fill up where that negativity um, had been before. Well, so that's how it's kind of run. It's kind of that's how we run them anyway. Well, I guess since um, you know I, I I left the church and what i do is really frowned upon because they say oh that's satanic and you know you shouldn't mess with that kind of stuff as to where i mean i feel like i'm helping people i i don't know i don't know that much about catholicism i only know what you know i was taught in the baptist church and mm -hmm. it's you know i'm i guess y'all are more accepting of the fact that there's a spiritual war going on and you have to prepare yourself because of, you know, even to say that you're an empath or a mystic, that's really frowned upon in, in the Baptist religion. Yeah, it's, um, there's definitely, um, you know, Judeo-Christian religions that recognize um, the battle of good and evil, right? Right. Um, and, uh, certainly Catholicism is one of them. Um, they do use the term mystic as opposed to medium or empath or clairvoyant, but it's, you know, it boils down to the same thing. It's just, it's semantics. So yes, I am a mystic in the church, um, like with my certificate from the two archbishops that have signed off on it. And I have a third as well that vouches for me. Um, so a lot of in, in Catholicism, a lot of the saints were actually mystics. Like I was saying before, I'm not going to be a saint just because I'm a mystic. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. I'm not saintly. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so, um, but that's just, you know, it's something that they don't necessarily frown upon it because actually Pope Francis has said that the church needs more mystics. Um, I'm independent Catholic, so I'm not under the, under the vatican but um you know it's nice that he recognizes that like that that they're accepting of this more now and um and that um with things changing in the world that it's like the children will see and the and the old will dream like like prophecies wise and they recognize that as the world changes um so it's um it's just it's just it's just semantics i mean yeah the church doesn't say medium 
kind of thing. So, but if you get certified as a mystic, then that's okay. So yeah. it, it, it's, it's just a term, right? It's just a term. So just, just a, it, like a, a rose by any other name, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, I, when I was a witch, I was doing the same thing and I had the same gifts and I just, you know, I just wasn't Catholic, <laughs> you know, at that time right. I was doing essentially the same work. I mean, I can do a little bit, I do more now in terms of the rituals because of, um, because of my title. And, and so I have more, um, and that's why I was called to do it, to, to be, to, to do more, to be more of a help, um, in this battle. So that's how I ended up, um, being a sister, which my friends couldn't, some of them, he was like, one of my friends is like, but you were like the witchiest witch that ever witched. He's like, I learned, <laughs> he's like, I learned so much from you and you taught me so much about this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still the same gal, you know? just have a different outfit <laughs> well when god you calls know? you 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 try to do what he tells you to do you know it's, well, it is a call exactly and even even as a witch i believed in i believed in a higher power i believed in a divine creator so you know my my faith then and now haven't changed a whole ton you know i mean obviously there's some changes but um you know, it's, it's still the moral compass that guides me to do right, you know, and, and whether I said the creator or whether I say God, it's the same, I'm, I'm speaking of the same entity, you know, so. Well, God will use you in, in whatever way that uh, he, he can to, especially when you're bringing people to God or like in your case, the, the work you're doing with the exorcisms because whenever I've started going to church the it's funny because I met this guy he's an ex-bandito you know long hair tattoos riding motorcycle and all that and of course mm -hmm. that's all I wanted to talk about was the motorcycle and tattoos and whatnot and out of the blue he says hey would you like to go to church with me well God used somebody like that to, to you know to catch my eye i guess you'd say and to, to bring me to him so just because you're a witch or whatever people are like how could you be a witch and then be a, a sister or, you know god knows how to use you yeah exactly i got called i listened to my calling here i am you know i'll say being a witch you see it's a lot less cool <laughs> <laughs> i am sweating so much right now <laughs> it's like 45 degrees celsius and i'm like Ugh, yeah <laughs> anyway that's okay a small price to pay <laughs> now we also talked before we started the show about my wife she has abilities and when there's something as far as a spirit or an entity comes near, she starts to vibrate. Uh, myself, which I'm just kind of really in my infant stage of learning about my abilities, one of my ears will start popping when something's near. Mm -hmm. um, what what happens whenever an entity gets close to you? Um, depending on what type of an entity it is, I will have different feelings. If it's something negative, um, I vibrate, um, my stomach will go. Um, I can develop anxiety from the entities. Like if they're not nice, like I just had to have my house cleansed. There was something here and it was not nice. And I was just like, why am I so anxious? Like what's going on? And I'm like, oh, there's something here, you know? And, uh, and that's what it was. Cause then I would start to pray and it would go away after but i was having trouble remembering my prayers and i find that if it's a negative energy and a negative entity and i'm trying to pray it interferes with my thought process and it's like why am i forgetting that prayer like i know that prayer why am i stumbling over it you know it's it's messing with you to try you know it's messing with you but um 
but I'll pick up on, I mean, just different things. Like, like I was saying, like I was going to a house cleansing. I started crying, like bawling, like 15 minutes before I got there because there had been a lot of dead children at the place. And I was just like, it came out of nowhere. I'm just in the car and then all of just like, bless, snort, snot and tears. And I'm just like, I don't know where that came from, but there's a lot of sad kids there, you know? And uh, <laughs> father's like, okay, <laughs> Kleenex for you, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it's just different spirits will give me different feelings. Some of them are energy. Some of them let me know how they've um, passed on. Like I'll get chest pain if they've had a heart attack, um, you know, or if they have a, or if they were crippled in one leg, then my leg will cramp up and, you know, um, and that will happen. And then that's stuff I find out later. I'm like, can you find out did this person die of a heart attack? Oh no, they had lung cancer. I'm like, I don't think so. I think they had a heart attack. And then sure enough, they had a heart attack. And usually when I acknowledge what I'm being told, it stops. It will go away. Once I'm like, okay, I feel what you're telling me. I feel that you've had a heart attack. I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I feel how you passed away. Thank you for showing me. And then it'll go away. It's not too much that it hangs around afterwards. So that's good but some of them like, like to expose how they've died, you know? So, yeah. You know, a lot of folks will, they'll watch these paranormal shows and they're like, Oh, I'd like to do that too. And so they'll, they'll just go willy nilly. Now I'll, I'll admit when I first got into it, I was not well trained, but I, I was being taught as it was going along people don't realize how much of a toll it can take on your body and your mm -hmm. mind when, mm -hmm. when you deal with this kind of stuff. Um, I went through a lot of physical pain, which I know is attributed to the things that I had encountered. So um, it's something to really, really consider before getting into any kind of paranormal investigation. Don't think it's all fun and games that, you know, you're going to be the next Zach Bagans or something. <laughs> it's yeah it doesn't work that way most of us don't make money most of us it costs us money so mm -hmm. um and and yeah and definitely and well even he had problems with his eyes right uh um after he went in demon house his eyes went wonky and he has to wear special glasses i think um but yeah and a lot of people that are sensitive whether they're empaths or mediums or whatever a lot of them have autoimmune diseases a lot of them suffer from chronic pain and uh it seems to come like it's like almost like you know you get this gift but you also get this curse with it yeah. and, you know and you kind of have both i've noticed a lot of people with those abilities will get thyroid problems so there's there's just so many things like we're just so like a sickly bunch <laughs> not uh, everybody but like i know people that have had to stop their work that they were doing because mm -hmm. they physically couldn't handle it anymore you know they just couldn't it was just too much for them that so they had to stop they had to stop doing readings and and um you know and kind of realign their life path because it just wasn't working for them anymore so well, I, I told you about all the ailments that I had had that I'd never had before. And it, you just, you don't know what you're going to run into. So I just caution people before you get into it, make sure this is really what you want to do. I'm not going to discourage you from doing it, but I'm also not going to tell you, Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody needs to go do this. It's not always for everybody. You have to prepare yourself in so many ways. Mm -hmm. so. yeah it's not like something that you like in a movie they see like a bunch of drunk people that are like let's go check this out yeah no that's just asking for so much trouble <laughs> you know and, and people shouldn't be trespassing to like to get into some of these places that are they're not open anymore and they're boarded up and stuff and like people put themselves in physical danger like of the places that they're sneaking into to explore you know um that maybe the floors are all rotten out and you know a hundred year old building and that kind of thing and and 
you know, not, not to mention the spiritual risk that you're putting yourself at and the risk of bringing, bringing something home to your family so that, you know, you have kids at home. Do you want to bring something home that's going to mess with your kids? And, exactly. you know, it's, it's not always that easy to get rid of them. And uh, especially if you don't know what you're doing, it's really, it's a serious, it's a serious thing. It's not a joke, you know, and uh People think, oh, it's cool, it's novel, it's this, you know, it, okay, it might seem novel, but, you know, there's there's just more to it than that. You're just seeing one level. And if you're going into it with that kind of an attitude, to me, that's like the total wrong attitude that you should right. be going into it with. If that's your attitude, you probably shouldn't be doing it. It, so. will, it will hit your pocketbook in more ways than one, too. So, you know, we go out and we help people. And we don't charge anybody. So the equipment, no. the gas, the, you know, if we have to go out of town, there's, you know, your stay at a hotel, your food, your things like that. And in my case, when I got sick, I went to three different doctors. I had every test in the world. They even did a, a might sound gross, but they did a colonoscopy on me because I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my stomach. Yeah. And it, it was all because of, what I had encountered mm -hmm. it, it took if I had just gone to to my psychic medium friend in the beginning I would have probably saved a lot of money but you know to, <laughs> to find out this is what I needed to do to get rid of it and you just you have to be prepared don't yeah. don't just jump into it thinking this is going to be just like you see on tv the those guys I have friends that have been on television and they do these things all the time for the cameras, but they, people don't see what they take home with them. And that's right. You could split up a family because of these things. They will attack yeah. your family. Yeah, for sure. It's, it, you're not seeing the whole thing. You're, you, you know, you see a 30 minute show and, and you know, it, and a happy ending or you know oh, that was cool or they got evidence and stuff but like they can they suffer with stuff they're not they're not they don't get away unscathed just because they're on tv either so mm. you know it's, it doesn't you stop just, you're just not seeing off. it no in, in fact that's when a lot of it starts exactly it's when the cameras go off so yeah for sure and as we were talking about beforehand too uh, doing an investigation on your own place that you do that at your own peril as well. That's how you yeah. stir things up. A lot yeah. of factors to think about. And I, I suggest if you're that serious about it, get the proper training. Don't just go jump in it. I, I kind of just jumped right in it whenever I, I started, I had people training me, but, I was kind of left to my own device and I was trying to emulate what I saw on TV and that's not the way to do it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, it might work for them, but yeah, I mean, we're not on TV and it's not a 30 minute segment and edited and like evidence wise <laughs> too, we were talking about, you know, you can go on an investigation and sit for 12 hours and not hear anything mm -hmm. or have anything anything happen at all so you know investigating is not at all like excitement a lot of times it's like incredibly boring and it's like hurry up and wait and that's like the, the situation you know sometimes and uh people think you're just going to automatically go shut the lights off and stuff's going to start happening it's not, not the case always not even close so well they think you know. the, in that terms of the weekend warrior you go out there and and you think one weekend you're going to catch all this stuff those guys are there for weeks sometimes they'll be in the same spot for six weeks before they get anything that they can even put into a show so that 30 minute to an hour show you're watching is an accumulation of about a month month and a half mm -hmm. so um, you know don't don't think it's going to be oh that, and that's another thing. Uh, I, I know I'm, my mind is going all over the place right now, but uh, I'll follow pages on Facebook and Instagram. And you'll mm -hmm. have these guys that they'll go out on an investigation on a Friday night or a Saturday night. And every time they go out, they get uh, all this evidence that I have to be very skeptical about that. 
Yeah, I'm, if they're lucky enough to get evidence every single time they go, because it's not, it's not like that in the real world, <laughs> you know. And, and like you said, they could have been editing stuff down like crazy to to get what they've gotten. So, but yeah, I mean, it's it's become trendy. It's become on vogue to do this. You can buy the equipment anywhere and you know people just need to be careful because there's there's a lot of bad stuff out there but uh you know if we could actually see what we're dealing with i can guarantee we wouldn't be doing it like you know if you could actually see a true representation of what that energy that you're dealing with actually looks like <laughs> wouldn't want anything to do with it so uh, to me that's another calling to, to get into mm -hmm. paranormal investigating you you have to be your heart has to really be in it it's not one of those, oh, my hobby I'm going to do on the weekend every once in a while. You, you have to be dedicated to it because it's just like that spiritual battle. You have to have the armor, the armor of God on you or you're going to lose. Yeah. But, uh, Agreed. So if folks want to follow you on social media, where can they find you? Um. Twitter uh, is at oracles do exist. Uh, Instagram is lady luck with an E 73. Um, and on Facebook, uh, sister is not allowed. So it says S Kia Lynn Francis because sister is not a proper term that they accept. So, um, but uh my accounts are pretty locked down, but that's okay. Just send me a friend request and I'll, I'll let you in. Now, do you have a, a website that people can be referred to? Um, I don't have my own personal website. I don't think I'm that important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Tony Spera has a website with the Warrens with all the, the history of the Warrens on it cases and, and stuff like that. And it's pretty interesting. And, uh, so Tony Um, and you can go look at that and it has a list of all the bios of everybody that's on the team, um, at the bottom of it. And, uh, so there's some interesting content there about the Warrens. It's worth a read, see all everything that they did for the, um, for the industry, you know, before it was an industry. And um, yeah, so so Tony has a Tony has a good website. Yeah. So, how, how do you spell his last name? S P E R A. S P E R A. Okay. I will yeah. try to get all those links and uh, I will put them in the description of our our video and audio podcast. Perfect. That way people can can go and follow it. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't really mess with Twitter. I used to. Yeah, I used to too. It's kind of sad and it's just gotten so ugly. I, I just stay away from it. Yeah, there's a lot of toxic, toxic stuff on there. So like, yeah, but I, I have them all, but I don't have TikTok. So I guess that makes me not cool. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I, I was very reluctant. I was trying my best to stay away from TikTok and I just somebody had said something about how it was getting to more people and sure enough i put up my first video and it got more traction than my facebook and my instagram put together so yeah i think like it's, it's, the, you know <laughs> what are you gonna do right i couldn't figure it out if i tried i'm sure <laughs> Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for reaching out to me. Um, it's been such a pleasure. If ever you have anything come up that you would like to share, I would like to invite you back on the show again. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we will definitely make sure all those links are up. Appreciate everybody that watches us and listens to us without your support. We just wouldn't be able to do what we do. So until the next one, Take care. Bye-bye.